Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game from the 1957 USSR Championship. This was played on February 21st between Mikhail Tall on the white end and Alexander Tolush. Okay, with this one, we have a pretty one-sided attack to defeat this King's Indian defense. A big reason for this is the structure. White will soon work with a superior one. We're going to have a space advantage for White, a fixed center. That will be further fixed because of a decision by Black on move 9. Not a good idea to further fix the position. From that point on, it becomes very difficult even to make suggestions for Black. A lot of nothing moves, passing moves in a way, back and forth moves. It is almost as if in this game Black is operating on only two ranks, 7 and 8. Not a whole lot of space. And there's also this very narrow path of possibilities for Black maybe along the A and B files. What I haven't highlighted yet, this area here is in a way Tall's playground in this game. So right out of the gates we could get a sense of the space difference in the game, where the white pieces will mostly be moving to, and what the black pieces are doing. There's two pieces to pay special attention to in this game, the kingside miners. For me at least, paying close attention to these two has helped make this game more memorable. They have something in common. They both carry a concealed threat. It may seem like, why are they going to that square? What can they possibly do from that point? Well, watch how they spring to life. Watch how they play a significant role in this kingside attack. What is White's weapon of choice to defeat the King's Indian defense? The Zamish with F3. Let's get some more development in. This arrangement here, queen and bishop battery, very common. Useful strategy to try and exchange dark square bishops. Getting rid of this key kingside defender will make a, king, a successful kingside attack much more likely. Okay. Castles, d5, met with c5, further fixing the position. So this is where you'll see a significant shift in the evaluation with this ninth move, c5. What is being suggested in this position? Well, computer suggests h6. And after the bishop falls back, to open the position a little bit more. We're now working with an open C file, and there's a little bit more maneuvering space for black to seek counterplay on the queen side. In this game, though, it's C5. I should also note the tactical point behind h6 if white takes on this square this is a trick that black has up his sleeve knight takes e4 hitting the queen and opening up a square for the queen on h4 how would this play out knight takes knight land a check that's a fork and this is how black gets the piece back you could carry it out a little bit further and say wait a second white in the end could win this pawn White is up a piece after the smoke clears, but white, excuse me, black has compensation here. And this is the big compensation, a very strong piece. Also stops this rook from even participating. Okay, compensation for black in a variation like this. Black's decision is c5. Locked center, where do we go from here? We play on the wings. This g pawn is the G-Knight's friend in this game, for sure. A6, Knight G3, Rook E8. It's not an open file. This is more about opening up a square for a Knight. In comes H4, very thematic, trying to bite at the G-Pawn so that the Rook has some play. Queen A5, Bishop H6, Knight F8, H5, Queen C5. So we're seeing this you know, these nothing type moves. Bishop d3, b5, queenside castle. So after this next decision, the capture on c4, this was really the main takeaway for me in this game. This next decision by Tall, 
He doesn't recapture the pawn. He goes back to b1. Now, why isn't he capturing the pawn? Well, if there's a pawn on this square, you know, there's not going to ever be a black piece on that square. If there's a pawn on this square, there's also never going to be a black piece on the c5 square either. What am I talking about? Well, if the bishop recaptures, you could maybe see a position where the rook gets to b4, or maybe even the queen gets to b4. The bishop is scared away. Let's say it goes here, and then the pawn can advance. And who knows, maybe one of these knights can maybe make use of the c5 square. He's kind of, with this decision, bishop b1 saying, I want to put my bishop on a secure square. I'm going to let you be up the pawn. And I know now that I don't have to deal with any pieces on these two squares, c4 and c5. Also, if you're wondering why b1 instead of the c2 square, the queen has direct sight of b2 in case there's a battery formed here. White is already there defending. So the bishop simply goes all the way back on b1. And for the moment, it is just staring at a pawn. Not always going to be the case, though. All right, from here, bishop goes to h8, rook d to g1. You see what's happening next. I said the g pawn is the g knight's friend in this game. There we go. If this knight is captured, we know what's happening. We're taking towards the center. And not only this rook, but really all major pieces will flood the black king side, the g file. Uh, get ready <laughs> for for something like this. If black is capturing, okay, you get the piece right back and good luck trying to defend this. You can't. So now black is in this pickle. It's like, well, do I work around the knight or do I take the knight and deal with these three? You have to try and work around the knight. What other options do you have? And look at, again, as mentioned at the start, how narrow this path is for maybe some activity against the king, but there's just no attack there. This is, again, a very one-sided game with this idea, the king knight getting into that f5 square, glued in, really, with these two pawns, and the rook there as backup. Okay, what, what's, what's this guy doing? What are, what are any of these pieces doing? This is, this is maybe the best piece, but it's not coordinated. Okay, from here, knight, knight six to d7. Bishop g5 is opening up the h6 square for the knight. Bishop g7 is played to stop the knight from getting there, and we have knight takes bishop. This seemed a little bit awkward to me to see this decision, like giving up a dark square bishop for a knight seems crazy, but what are your alternatives? I had a look at a passing move like a5 or queen here or bishop here or the knight even returning. All of those moves, let's just put one of them on, all of those moves can be met with knight h6. And it's kind of like this bishop is a captured piece. What is it even doing in the corner? Very difficult position here for black. So this is this sort of uh, position black doesn't want to be in with the bishop stuck in the corner not contributing so simply plays bishop g7 knight takes bishop is in there and we give a check and try and open the position further try and break down the dark squares e takes f hits white's recapturing moving forward queen goes back home Positions opening up on the king side. Queen is hit. She goes to h2. We got this battery here. Look at the major pieces. The difference with the major pieces here. Wow. How to defend this? Knight e5. Bishop f4. There's a small window here for black to get back in the game, surprisingly enough. I should also have mentioned that this break going back here with f4... You have to weigh this very carefully because on one hand you you break down the pawns that are on dark squares and this is normally good news for the unopposed dark square bishop but notice the square that has opened up for multiple black pieces 
Okay, it's still a, an effective plan here for white, but something to consider here, playing as white that particular pawn break. White has this idea now to move the bishop. He does, in this position, go to f4. This is where black can get back in the ball game. He doesn't find the best move. He goes with knight to f8, simply defending h7. The computer says, don't be afraid of queen takes pawn, <laughs> surprisingly enough says play queen f6 and allow this pawn to be captured and maybe you could survive this not so easy to to play in this way what is considered best for white in this position instead of bishop f4 is to come all the way back here the idea being that queen f6 is no longer a good reply because you can capture an h seven and then play to the f file and immediately hit the queen when the bishop was on f4 you wouldn't have this threat after rook f1 okay in this game after bishop f4 black simply defends h7 directly white enters on the dark squares and after bishop g5 you have to play f6 if you simply move the queen you're going to get crushed on the dark squares so after f6, this guy right here on b1 has been waiting for his, uh, his moment to shine. Well, here it comes, e5. White's not reacting to these threats. He's ready to smash away on the light squares. So there's actually two pieces that spring to life because of that e5 move. These guys, the bishop as an open view and the knight finally has a square towards the king side from here rook takes pawn what other options are there let's have a look at the capture of the bishop how would this play out if black captures well white's going to take on g6 and regardless of how black recaptures the queen will be able to make use of h7 or h8 let's have a look at both of them if knight takes bishop, you can take here with check. Go here with check. These blocks aren't doing anything. You just take. So the only one to look at is the knight block. This is now a checkmate in three. One, two, three. And let's have a look at the other capture on g6. And that is with the pawn. We land a check here. We could go in there and coming up we got this check and this is completely winning this file will be opened up and seems like you're going to be giving mate or winning the queen completely winning here for white so this guy in short after e5 is definitely poison rook takes pawn follows now in comes bishop takes knight rook b7 needs some more defense of h7 here comes the last piece, knight e4. What do you do here? I mean, in this in this current position, white is not only attacking for, for free, white is up a piece. Black hasn't recaptured the piece just yet. So going for a continuation like this, you could always just take like that and be up the exchange. Okay. In this game, it is pawn takes on g5. Rook f1, and right around the corner, there's knight f6. So the knight is swiped. Pretty much cannot allow knight f6 with check. That's going to collapse if you allow that. So this is what's tried. Rook takes knight. Bishop takes rook. Rook g7. Rook f6, and bishop takes g4. Now the continuation from here, not the most efficient. There is a a very nice move that white has in this position the move played in the game is rook on h to f1 can you spot what the best move is here for white feel free to pause the video okay the very best move it's leading to some mate in eight is bishop takes on h7 what's the idea well after knight takes bishop there's this one move that wins quiet move rook g6 binning the rook and also threatening queen takes knight right away this is completely winning 
position for white. In the other sequence, which is much cleaner, after bishop takes pawn, if you take with the rook, it's a mate in two. With rook takes knight, and queen takes rook. Okay, bishop takes h7, not spotted at this moment. Instead, doubling on the f-file. The knight was attacked, it's out of danger now. Rook takes d6, queen e7. What do we do? Bishop is attacked, nothing. We try to get to the back rank. We just happened to be grabbing a pawn on our way to a8. So that cannot be allowed. If you take the if you take the bishop, this will be leading to mate. So black tries to hide in the corner, preparing to meet the check with the block. This is where white says bishop takes h7. So now if this guy is captured, we get to the back rank and mate right around the corner. Okay, black does not take the bishop. Instead, knight b8, pretty sad move to play. Knight on the back rank there, in comes the discovered check. King g8, another check. Bishop takes bishop, rook takes bishop. This one here and goes no further. Black resigns. What are you supposed to do? Can't go too far with the queen. Otherwise, this is going to hit, so we can test out one move. Queen d7 can be met with... Rook to h1. And what are you doing about this? This guy might as well be a captured piece. Completely winning position for white. So what'd you think of this one? This is a very nice attack by Tal in this game. And a fun side note with this one, uh, a quote by uh, Mr. Tolush. After the game, he was... Uh, he spoke with Boris Spassky, also a, a competitor in this event. And he said to Boris Spassky, quote, You know, Boria, today I lost to a genius. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I completely agree here with uh, Tal's opponent. He was for sure the magician from Riga, a genius. Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.